make him feel welcome as I say for the last time, go Beach Go! Another big fat Irish guy on stage. <laughs> and it's not fucking Darrow O'Brien for a change, eh? <laughs> Look, since I've come to England, everywhere I've gone, when I go for a, it, it would pub for a pint or down to the local shop, it doesn't take long for someone to turn around and go, go on, go on, <laughs> go on. You little feckle, yeah. <laughs> so I know what you're all thinking. So let's get it out of the way now. Everybody, come on. Go on, go on, go on. Yeah, little pecker, yeah. <laughs> now, just for some of you people here who think, oh yeah, another smart arse on stage using rude language. Well, I'm not. I am actually using the right to speak my own native tongue. And I'll explain to you. When you go to school in Ireland, and you're probably about four years of age, on your first day, your first word you're taught is fuck'em. <laughs> Not F-U-C, like you're thinking, it's F-O-C, because fuck'em is Gaelic for world. It's just the first word you're taught. <laughs> True. Anyway, you go home on your first day and the mother goes, well, Ger, how did you get on today at school and what did you learn? And you can go, fuck all, Mammy! <laughs> she go, that was great. <laughs> Very good with pronunciation. <laughs> anyway, a few more weeks passed and you learned a few more fuckles. <laughs> and one of them is fetching. <laughs> and that means to see. Feckin' me too. I see you. Right? So there you are, you're four in the bit, and you're walking down the road with those two words, fuckle and feckin'. <laughs> and you're going to have years and years and years of fun with them. You'll be fucking this and fuckin' that, and feckin' this and feckin' that. And all you're doing is speaking Gaelic. <laughs> we even have a town in Ireland called Tumen Fechen. <laughs> right. <laughs> While I'm over here, I thought I'd better go and pay a visit to the Queen. Does anybody know where Graham Norton lives? <laughs> <laughs> the town I'm from in Ireland is a little place called Ballina <coughs> in the county of Mayo, right on the west coast. Lovely town, very cultural. Well, agricultural, but there you go. <laughs> I remember the very first time we got traffic lights in our town. It was a real party occasion when the lights were being switched on. We were there for hours and hours and hours because our little town was been brought into the 20th century. Jesus, we thought it was great. <laughs> there we are, anyway. Watching these lights for gold change color. But then the old people started coming into town. And I overheard one of them go, Jesus Christ. This town has gone to fuck all together. <laughs> They've even got fucking disco lights on the streets. <laughs> I'll tell you what's a wonderful institution, British institution, that I've discovered since I come here. It's the charity shop. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful shops full of all sorts of knickknacks. Lovely little old dears looking after them. Absolutely wonderful. Have you ever tried to bring anything back? <laughs> Your jacket. <laughs> I'll have you know I won the bet tonight. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> well, I was in this. 
funny enough, I'm coming around to that now. I was in this uh, charity shop one day and I spotted a suit that I was going away for tonight. And the suit cost £10. So I tried it on. And it was a lovely jacket now. <laughs> not like this. But not like this. Nothing else for it. It was a lovely jacket, fitted me grand. So I went down and I paid me £10. And I took it out of the car. My girlfriend was waiting in the car and I took it out to her. Oh, yeah, something else I nearly forgot to tell you. I'm getting married in September. <laughs> I know. I was talking when I should have been listening. <laughs> How in the name of Jesus she goes, will you marry me? Out of... <laughs> but she did. Anyway, I don't suppose you can be happy all your life, can you? <laughs> <laughs> so there we are, we're looking at the suit, and I discover that the jacket and the trousers actually don't match. So I take it back, and the lovely little old dear that served me was there. So I said, excuse me, uh, I bought the suit two minutes ago. I said, oh, yeah, I, I, yes. I said, the jacket and the don't match. So I said, you know, oh, she said, I'm really sorry about that. She nearly sounded like my mother there, didn't she? she said, no, I'm really sorry about that. She said, um, is there anything else in the shop you'd like instead? And I go, well, no, not really. I'd just like my money back if I could. Well, she stopped, dead in her tracks. And she looked at me, and you swear to Jesus, I was fecking and blinding and blaspheming and roaring and going on for an hour in the shop the way she looked at me. So she's shaking her head. And she goes, Fanny! Fanny! Oh, down comes another little old girl, lovely. Down comes up. She just checked my bought a suit. And the romantic, da 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 da. And so Fanny goes, oh, that's a bit because it's a lovely jacket. <laughs> Not like that one. No, no, no. <laughs> it's a lovely jacket, she said. I said, it is a lovely jacket. It's an awful pity the trousers didn't match because it would be great. See, so, anyway, she said, oh, that's, uh, that's, uh, we're sorry about that, she said. But just as she says that, the other woman goes, he wants his money back. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> well, she looks at me now. A look that it would just stop you dead in your tracks. It was the kind of look, you know, that she had on her face. It was like as if she stepped in dog's shit <laughs> in her bare feet. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'm starting to sweat. I'm feeling like a bit of a fucking criminal now. There's people queuing up behind me, and I can hear them taking a murmur and going on. So I think Jesus. So she goes, because the children are staring at me. So anyway, she goes, we'll have to get Doris. So she presses a bell, must bring in an office somewhere, and in comes Doris, a big, big, rotund woman. Full of authority. What seems to be the problem here? So we went through the whole old rigmarole of things, and she goes, have you got your receipt? So I said, oh, shh. I can't find her, but I tell you, I just bought off this woman two minutes ago. And, now Doris has a little bit of sympathy for me at this stage, until the two of them in unison go, he wants his money back. And Doris turned into something out of one of those horror movies, one of those, like, werewolf type thing. <laughs> Shaking her head, and so did the other two. Now, I'm thinking, this is fucking awful. I wish to chase the ground would just open up and swallow me. Or I could make a dash for the door. But I can't do that either because my front future wife is outside. And I can't go up to her and say, I couldn't give me fucking ten pound back. I'm in the with So I stayed. And the queue was getting bigger and bigger. And they're all putting and going out. Anyway, Doris eventually puts her hand in to the till and takes the money out and gives me the ten pounds. It's nearly burning me hands. <laughs> so I slink off to the door and I'm feeling awful. I feel, I couldn't have felt any worse if I'd gone in there, robbed the till, taken all the charity boxes and stolen the homemade strawberry jam. 
Anyway, I've been off a bit of a gumshite at times, and a pure angel sometimes. I was in hospital a few years ago, and uh, I don't spend much time around hospitals, I don't spend a lot of time in hospitals, so they're quite daunting places for people who don't go to hospitals. And you know, once you get over the, you know, the humiliation of, 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 of having that gown on with your hair sticking out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> hair to look good in that. But once you get over that and everything, it's the staff. Staff are wonderful, but they're dealing with patients and problems day in, day out. So they don't really explain things. But not to talk to gobshites like me, they don't tell you everything. So I was having this operation for my appendix, you say, a few years ago before a keyhole surgery. And down comes the nurse with a razor, some water, and some soap. And she said, your operation is going to be in a couple of hours, so we just like you to shave. I said, no, not a problem. So oh, she comes, comes down after the, uh, well, it was time to get up to the theater with the porch and wheel me down. And she goes, have you had a shave? I said, I have. I'm looking good now for the surgeon. <laughs> good night, you'll be great. Thanks very much indeed.